didn't wait for him to get into the yard. Amen? Amen. And maybe, just maybe, Brother Boykin's right. Maybe the father was thinking, if he gets close enough, they'll stone him before I can get there. Yeah, that's about right. So he runs down there and he puts his arms around him and he says, if you're going to throw any stones, they're going to have to come through me. Amen. Oh, I love that. Hallelujah. If you're going to throw any stones, they're going to have to come through me. Sometimes people don't like it when you get forgiveness. Amen. Well, I just don't understand it. Somehow we think people ought to have to do some penance. Make them suffer, God. You forgiven them? That's what the prodigal son's brother, that's the way he was. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me I've been here all along with the Father doing what you want me to do and this renegade? You've killed the fatted calf? You're throwing a party for him? Oh yeah. That's God's forgiveness. I know you would like to continue, our old flesh would like to continue to hold over people's heads the mistakes they've made in the past. But the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, honey, it don't stop there. It says that He will never remember them against you again. It says that He'll put them behind His back. It says that He'll forget about them. It says that He'll cast them into the sea. It says, Brother Sleece, that He'll take them from you and remove them, Sister Nancy, as far as the east is from the west. All that's promises. Amen? Oh, and I stand on those promises because I ain't always did everything in my life that I'm proud of. Maybe you have. Maybe you ain't never done anything that you was ashamed of, but I have, amen? But I thank God today that the Father stands between me and the rock throwers, amen? And if you throw any rocks, you're going to have to come through the blood to do it, amen? You're going to have to come through the blood to get to me. That's His promise. That's His promise. And we're talking about the promises of God. They're sure. They're steadfast. They're immovable. Oh, and there's lots of them. Amen? We talked last week about the promise of the Holy Ghost and how that Jesus promised them the Comforter would come, and it did. Amen? Amen. We talked about the promise of salvation. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and does penance and counts their beads. No, that ain't what it says. It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? That's about as firm and as clear a promise as I've ever heard. Amen? Maybe you see something in there that ain't like that to me, but it don't say nothing about baptism. It don't say nothing about penance. It don't say nothing about going out and doing good deeds in order to get forgiveness. Brother Bill says, If I call out on His name, if I confess my... If I confess my sins to Him, Amen? He is faithful and just to forgive, and He will save me. He'll save me. When Peter was going down there in the water and didn't have, you know, he didn't have time to say, you know, Mother Mary, uh, uh, you know, Mary, Mother of God, whatever it is they say. All he can say is, Lord, save me. If that's all you can get out, that's enough to get his attention, honey. Amen. Amen. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. We read how that Sarah, when she was old and her womb was supposed to be dead, we read how, Brother Bill, that she judged him faithful who had promised. Talking about God. That's in Romans the 4th chapter. No, I'm sorry. That's in Romans the 11th chapter. Romans the 4th chapter teaches us that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. That through faith he believed God. And we talked about how that when Abraham and Lot separated, because, you know, they couldn't get along. We wouldn't know about that day, would we? We talked about how that Abraham turned to Lot and he said, any place you want to go, I'll go the other way. He said, you turn to the right, I'll go to the left. If you turn to the left, I'll go to the right. Why? Because he staggered not at the promises of God. He knew what God had promised him, what God had said to him, and that he knew that God would fulfill it whatever direction he went in. So through eyes of faith, he goes out looking for a city whose builder and maker is God and through eyes of the flesh, Lot goes into a place that looks like Egypt. It's well watered. It looks like a good place for my crops. Anytime your flesh leads you in a direction, it will end the same way it ended with Lot. But through eyes of faith, Abraham, as you go to the right, I'll go to the left. God has promised me and He will fulfill. I'm not going to stagger at the promises of God. I have judged him faithful who has promised. 
That's what Abraham had done too. Amen. That's what we need to do this morning. Instead of sitting around belly aching and wondering where and how and why, we need to judge Him who has promised faithful. Amen? Judge Him faithful who has promised. He has promised He will do. Amen? He has promised and He will do what He said He will do. Paul said in 2 Timothy 1 and 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded into that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. You see, Paul had judged Him faithful who had promised. He was standing on the promises of God. He said, I know who. See, it ain't just this ain't no distant relationship. I know Him. Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. You see, Jesus today for me is not just a story. Not just some fairy tale I've heard. But honey, He's held my hand when nobody else would. He's walked the miles with me when everybody else had turned their back. He's held me in the midnight hour whenever I felt like I didn't have a shoulder to cry on. He's been there for me and I know whom I have believed in. And I have judged Him faithful this morning, Sister Nancy. And I am persuaded. Listen, I may fall down a thousand times before I get home, but I'm going to get home. You know why? Because not because I got faith in me, but because I got faith in Him. Amen. Amen. Boy, it's better preaching than amens I'm getting this morning. Amen. I have judged Him faithful. I know who I have believed in. Amen. And this ain't just somebody that walked with Abraham. He walks with me. He walks with you today, Brother Bill. Amen. This is a personal thing. And His promises are not just for a certain kind of people. They're for any old redneck that would call on His name. Any old country boy, amen, that would get His Word and say, I believe I believe it. Amen. I believe I stand on it. I believe I'm going to claim these promises for my own. You see, once you become born again, once you have a born again relationship with the Lord, once you have a personal relationship with the Lord and you become born again and you're grafted into the vine, you become one of His children, this right here is will to you. Amen? Brother Bill's got children. And whenever he passes on, he's probably going to leave his entire empire to some of his kids. Amen? Some of His empire, you know, His glorious riches. Well, that's what God does for us. You know how many people try to claim these promises and they ain't His child? Oh. Amen? you got to be born again. And none of these promises are yours. Or the Bill ain't going to leave his wealth to some stranger. He's going to leave it to his kids. That's what God has done this morning. He has promised us. He has written us this letter from Genesis to Revelation. And He says, I promise you. I promise you that all things work together for your good. I promise you that if you confess your sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. I promise you that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Amen? I am, I, that, that's just tip of the iceberg. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's Psalms 37 and 23. And he delighteth in his way. Listen to this. Verse 24 says, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Isn't that wonderful? Then he went on to say, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He is merciful and lendeth. And his seed is blessed. Did you hear that? That's a promise from God. Are you his seed? You are if you've been washed in the blood. You've been grafted into the vine, Brother Sleece. You became a, fam a part of the family of God, and you are blessed. And the, the, the enemy, no matter how much he tries, cannot curse what God has blessed. Don't mean you won't go through things. I get tired of hearing people saying, You know, I think I'm cursed. No, you ain't. Not if you're washed in the blood. There ain't no curse can get through that. Amen? Really? There ain't no curse can get through that. There ain't no generational curse that can withstand the born-again experience 
I'm not saying there's no such thing as a generational curse. I'm just telling you that once you're born to the blood of Jesus and born again, you inherit His blessings, not, his, not no curses. Amen? And the enemy cannot curse. What? Listen to this. Isaiah 54 and 17. These are promises. Write these down. You might need these this week. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Do you hear that? 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. God answered Paul. And the Bible says there's no respect to persons in God, meaning that what God did for Paul, He'll do for Selyse Butler. God answered him and said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Did you hear that? That lets me know whenever God was speaking this to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, and He said, My grace is sufficient for thee. He's telling me the same thing today too. His grace is sufficient for me. Amen. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper. I'm blessed because I am His seed. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. These are promises. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Check this out for a promise. Seek your teeth in this one. You probably jump a pew when you read this. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This is God talking. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Now let's stop there for a minute because sometimes people think, you know, God's mad at me. He don't like me. He's cut me off. He wants evil for me. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Did you hear that? To give you an expected end. He knows the thoughts that He has for you. And the thoughts that He has for you is to work all things together for your good. To give you an expected end. That in the end of things, you can look back and think, huh, the enemy did mean that for evil, but God meant it for good. The enemy desired to destroy me with that, but God used it to make me stronger. Amen? All things work together for good to them that love God and call according to His purpose. All things. Listen, 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 I'm glad. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. You going to start that off for me, Brother Bill? My people. If my people... Are you His people? Amen. Say, I'm His people. I'm if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... Oh, here comes the promise. <clears throat> then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Amen. There's your promise. If you hit your knees... And begin to seek Him, you will find Him. The Bible says, seek the Lord while He may be found. Amen. There's your promise to seek the teeth that do. 1 John 1 and 9, don't have to go there. Then quoted it to you. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You may need to print that one out and put it in your, you know, in your billfold or something. Because you ain't always going to be around the house whatever you see. And maybe you need to open that up and read it again. Well, I see it. I've, I've done messed up so many times. God won't never forgive me. You know how many times I've heard that? I uh, ain't no sense. I just, I, I just, there ain't no hope for me. Oh, yes, there is. Amen. Listen, to this. Let me move on down here. Got to skip a thing or two. Oh my, 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 my. What about the promise of His return? Yeah. Amen. Jesus told him in John the 14th chapter, John 14 and 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself. 